Welcome to another teardown video. This time it's another Schumberger. It's difficult to say, huh? <laughs> 4922 radio code analyzer. So I guess this one will be able to uh, encode and decode because there's a generator analyzer, right? All the different uh, selective uh, calls and all those kind of systems. So we got some input and output. So I guess this will be uh, audio. Oh yeah, print. What is that? The the buttons here they don't really move at all. Normally uh, there is a tiny little feeling on on this type of uh, plastic membrane um, keypads or keyboard, but here there's absolutely no movement or no feeling at all. It looks like there is some sort of a sexy screen with some intensity. Mm hmm. Let's see. Whoa, look at the back panel. It's module, much built of modules. But look at the back. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. It looks like, can you, I don't know if you can see this on the, on the video. But it really looks like it fell off a truck or something. Somebody has been sitting on this. <laughs> it's all bent. That is pretty cool. It can run on off a battery. 12 volts, 5 amps. Uh, pretty funny connector. DC cobbled some generator, cold and generator. What is this address? Something micro. Con is this an. It's not an HPIB bus, but something else, right? Well, let's, let's just try and power it up and see how. How much works? Let's try to power this thing up together. 75 watts, 60 watts. What? Ooh, I hear some. Something is actually alive. Oh, look at that. What? It's a CRT or something. Okay, it flickers a lot. Let me turn off the light and see if we can get it. Wow, look at that screen. That is sexy. So here's what I did. Input some tone numbers. One shot, you can move the cursor up and down and select repeat or single, whatever you want. I think one shot is pretty cool. And then we go to uh, run and then it sends the code. Let's look on the uh, at a scope. And then you get the audio. There's a big plop on the input and the output due to some AC, DC coupling problems. This is really not how it should have been, of course. So there's a uh, bandwidth. Uh, <laughs> it's just bad design. If you if you ask me, this is not, of course, not how it should be, right? And did you see the, the start one? Plonk. Not smart, huh? But anyway, we're going to try and see if we can listen to this audio, should we? Here's what I did. I just took a speaker and connected it directly to the output. It can actually drive a speaker. So let's listen to what it says. So that's the tones. All right. Also, what I tried is to connect the speaker to the monitor output. Ooh, that can't be right. I think it is time to look inside teardown time inside this beautiful unit 
There is indeed a CRT of some sort. There's a really short version of a CRT, so I can't wait to take the cover off. This is life threatening danger in here. High voltage and stuff. Ooh. And the power supply is a normal transformator type linear stuff with good old capacitors and this is good old uh, low noise tech with a big heat sink oh it's actually already hot look at that there's a crack in the aluminium frame and the first thing i see is the top module i think we can pull these out and have a look we got three more plugged in uh, guards here what I see is like three EEPROMs, and that means three different software, right? And we get a lot of microcontrollers. So this is what, an 6821? 6840, the RAM, the EEPROM, what's some IO timer stuff? 6802. Ooh, we got some AD converters. So some AD and DA converters here, and we've got, yes, the same over here, AD, DA stuff over here, some more AD parts. So that means analog and analog stuff, and two processors with two different types of software. So that is, of course, because it can encode and decode at the same time. So that is why you need two, <laughs> two microcontrollers to do that. I think that is pretty, pretty sexy. Also, what I found is here on the display board, there's also an EEPROM. Look at that. So that means there's also a microcontroller or some software just to just to scan the, the buttons. But, but really? Although there's not that many buttons and that many wires, they could have just mooked it. <laughs> Really, really cool. I got a, a little coax cable here and a coax cable here. And this coax cable goes to the monitor. Oh, now I know. This funny hum sound. That was a composite video signal, right? I gotta check that out. Of course, that that can really explain the, <laughs> the sound. Pretty cool. Of course there will be a video card or video generation because we got a CRT. And this is the next board, so there's another CPU card. Really? A lot of analog stuff. Op amps, analog multiplexers, tone generator and tone parts and stuff here. So the 6821, that is a parallel input-output. Uh, 6840, that will be timing. And the 6802, that is an 8-bit microcontroller. And this will, of course, be the program and the RAM. Wow. This is really, really nice. Let's see what, what the next card is. So this is the last unit. I think this is for the interface. Again, some memory. I don't really know those chips. And this will be the external interface. We got a lot of program memory here. And I think this one could be a battery backup battery or something for the SRAMs. And another 6802 CPU. A parallel interface for the intercommunication inside the system. Wow. And they, they did this really, really good with the copper springy contacts here. 
See, it's connected to all the PCB edges. Look at that capacitor here. I don't know if it's easy to see, but I think it puked. Can you see that one? That is not so good. So at least we got one puked capacitor so far. And the rest looks really, really in good condition. Also, what I found was this 86. So it's from 1986. Let's take a closer look on those two ICs. EF9340 and 9341. Those are graphic processors. So those are the ones generating the picture. Pretty cool. It looks also like their interface to the bus that goes to the IO interface, but I just think this bus continues to the CPU here. The 6802, this is what's running all the screen and testings and what is written. Not really. There isn't a lot of interface, but I think this is a two layer board. So the interface here is not on that many lines. That is probably all you need to generate a low updated text only kind of screen. And the PCB layout is really beautiful. It's a two layer board, super duper nice. And all the PCBs look like this. Really, really good done oh yeah um let's look at the battery here see nickel cadmium and it's i measured it to 1.9 volt and it says 2.4 so there's still enough voltage in it to maintain the ram i'll probably just plug this in a little bit more and then see if it charges so i powered up this unit but with only the bottom PCB mounted. Remember the one with the video generation and what I believe is the main CPU. And what do you know? There's full interface. Everything here seems to be working it's reacting on keyboard scan and display everything there's not even an error code of missing hardware so that is pretty fun of course it's not generating any codes it seems like it is doing its thing see it just go to run and then there's no feedback that turns off the led so so far so good there's also no audio output here, but the monitor output, I connected this to my scope. And of course, that is a composite video. And you see the two half bright and the full brightness uh, levels. So yeah, this is a, a normal composite video signal. Just like that. And this is the picture start frame. Yep. Let's try and plug in some more modules and see what happens. Plugged in the next board, and that is probably the receiver, because I still get no audio output when I run uh, the same sequence. It actually remembers uh, the sequence numbers and everything, uh, all your settings. So that is uh, pretty good. I kind of like that. It starts where you left it. And now we get audio output. So that is the top board. That is the uh, audio generator. I disconnected the second board just to prove that it, that it all comes from this module. So far, so good. So here's the CRT module. It is a ready unit. You just buy 
and put in your product 12 volt and 0.7 amps and you always find date information on CRT modules or even on the CRT itself because there is a limited life on phosphor stuff but 86 well, that is pretty good and the picture is still really really good on this one so this is the intensity knob and it just goes directly to the module and they used a nice coax cable for the composite video input I had the idea I could use this uh, monitor for composite video because this module or and this connector got composite video output so I just had the idea okay this composite video goes via this coax and then everything is fine but if you look carefully you'll see two other signals and that is how this thing is uh, actually working so this is the video image see sync is now gone and then the next one here is line sync uh, pulses and then the last one is frame sync or picture sync so that is how the damn thing works so I, I just can't use this screen directly because it is not compatible with the composite uh, video signals that contains uh, the sync uh, signals but you could of course put in a sync separator and then uh, use this monitor with composite uh, yeah that's just how it is could have been fun you know to play a computer game on it some some shit so it was a little bit difficult to take off the front because everything is really tight fit here need to remove this button to be able to pull off the front also see the the display here is so much smaller compared to the to the real size of the CRT and this is why I was a little bit confused about the way that it looked so flat and there wasn't really any round edges or anything so in the beginning I had the idea it could have been another type of uh, phosphor display and oh this is a little bit annoying those cables are not in sockets or anything so I don't know how can we how can we get this out this is the back side of the display and front panel let me see if I can get a little bit more light in here and this is the EEPROM that I was, I was talking about but there's no CPUs or anything like that so I think this is only doing some bit manipulation of the keyboard and or LEDs and stuff like that also this is the see? so this is the glass for the CRT and it is tinted quite a lot so that means you will need to crank up the intensity of the screen see it is and all this extra intensity creates wear on the CRT phosphor so this one is now turned off and you'll almost be able to read the menus and this is why screensavers were invented but please just crank down the intensity when the unit is not in use the film for the keys is almost delaminating right here but it seems to be working quite all right so this is the back side and the front side and then they go on each side of the keypads this is the mains on off switch and look at that now I'm actually holding the screwdriver more or less in the correct angle but see here 
this is the front right and look there's a panel there's a plate under here and then it actually starts more or less where this one ends so that means what they did <laughs> they put some heat shrink on the pins so it's more or less standing on the heat shrink instead of just cutting off those pins oh, that is really really not so safe that I will t I will totally fix this <laughs> by the way this particular type of type of uh, capacitor is well known to cause problems and there's another one here so if you need to repair something like this and there are funny errors replace these two. Oh, and here's the beaver you can't get any light yep that is the or the key pressed click 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 it says I think this is some sort of audio separation transformator for the output also you'll see separate wires and there's a rectifier diodes and a little voltage regulator so i think the input and output audio is actually balanced or isolated please tell me why did somebody think it's easier to cut or to add heat shrink instead of just cutting those pins that is beyond my belief I took out the power supply and it is a really neat unit they've thought about everything so it's super easy with the this is a mains in out connector and this is of course all the DC outputs but it's really beautifully made in a nice frame like this this must be a current sense resistor for current limit and there's no op amps or no funky stuff in this one only linear regulators like that isn't that just cute super nice and easy or maybe this is a power up amp maybe it is actually but anyway super simple design so we've got one power rectifier here for all the low voltage high current stuff and a shield for the transformator and of course the earth is made correctly so that is fantastic and then i found yep two more bridge rectifiers like that for the other voltages so yeah that is the power supply is really nice and heavy